slide will be kind of be the intro, because most of you guys don't know who I am, obviously. So, uh, I'm a bit tan there. Look at that. That was good in the uh, slide. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I teach at uh, National University of, of Health Sciences, which is a chiropractic college in Florida, and my website is deflame.com. The opposite of inflaming is deflaming. And my website currently is slightly inflamed because uh, we are um, kind of transitioning with a, a new website hosting group. So we're gonna talk today about how the human body literally transforms from a, a normal state into a mutated state that we, don't, we, we cannot see on the surface. And I'll show you some um, really interesting, actually histology type stuff in a couple of seconds. So my background with respect to pain, I wrote a paper, a review article back in 1999 on various pain syndromes for the spine. I get into nutrition way back when, because when I was young, I was thin. Really thin. Like, you know, turn sideways and disappear kind of guy. So I get into nutrition early on, and as a chiropractor, uh, we're, we treat patients in pain, obviously, so I started working on nutrition and pain control. This is back 20 years ago. This was 1995. And then in 1999, I wrote this, oh, sorry, 1998, I wrote this, I turned that, that workbook into a nutrition sort of textbook that people are actually selling online on, e on eBay for like 300 bucks. I get like 65 for it, so they're really good markers of my stuff. And then in 1999, uh, 2002 rather, I wrote this paper. It was the first paper pu published in the scientific literature that actually kind of was a review article on how eating can create an inflammatory state that can create a painful state. And it's very difficult to kind of comprehend because we, we can't really see inflammation or pain, we just feel it. So I wrote several articles and or read, read the chapters in various textbooks. This would be one on nutrition for, 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 for basically pain rehabilitation, spine rehab, <coughs> soft tissue injuries, and sports injuries. And then more recently, I wrote this paper, 2013, uh, looking at how body mass index is related to musculoskeletal pain. Now you got a lot of people who are pretty buffed uh, working out in the back, in, in, in the open area, outside the ballroom, and they would argue probably that BMI is not accurate. And in fact, it's very accurate if you understand BMI properly. So here are a whole bunch of markers that, that are listed in this paper. So if you want to get this paper, I suggest that you do. It's useful for whether you're a clinician or a pro, or uh, I guess that's mostly who we have here to, today. So you just Google BMI uh, pain David Seaman, and then this paper will appear, and you'll get these various markers. So I'm not gonna go over these markers, obviously, because of the time situation, but here's an example of body mass index that people say, well, it's not accurate, not accurate. Here's how you check body mass index. And the reason why we want to do this is because we heard before about movement, stability, getting to positions. If one is mutated physiologically and physically, how it's very difficult to get to those positions and move the way we want our golfers to move. So we look at BMI and we look at normal or overweight. There's some guys out there who are really packed who are 32 BMI. They said, well, BMI is inaccurate. You check it by looking at waist hip ratio. That confirms or denies the accuracy of body mass index. So speaking of body mass index, this was me looking sort of like a, I don't know, like a praying mantis type creature way back when, walking along. I actually won the high jump uh, kind of championship that, that day. You can see closer. Looks sort of like a, I had a really long arm, like a missing link kind of guy. <laughs> but my BMI back then, I was about 145 back then, 150, the same height, 6'2". And then as time went on, uh, actually after uh, I graduated from high school, a buddy and I bicycled to Florida, and then I got into uh, playing golf, uh, into golf fitness. I never hit a ball, this is just stationary, just stationary. So currently I like to play golf. This is me basically double bogeying number 17 at Bethpage Black on the left. And this is me catching not so tasty waves in Florida compared to California. But the point though is, if I want to do these things as I age, now I'm mid 50s, but I want to do this until I'm like 70, 80, I cannot be inflamed. I cannot be inflamed. What happens is, if we're not careful, as we age, we physically mutate, we, we physically and I should say biochemically mutate into an inflamed and painful state that is often very difficult to treat with rehabilitation, manual care, medications. 
So we want to understand how we mutate. It's very, very simple. It's like the big old hairy elf in the room that's right there, and we know it, but we just, eh, we want to avoid it because of something I'll talk about in a couple seconds. So this was me in my most mutated state. To say politely, I had about 20 pounds extra of human tissue of a non-muscular origin <laughs> on my body, right? Fat, fat. So I was in the process of actually inflammaging. That's actually a scientific term, inflammaging. We inflammage as we age, we're not careful. So quick, can everyone here just, just, just for fun, please, everyone right now just say yes. Yes. Oh, you guys are awesome. Okay, so left side versus right side. We have, the question is, this is an electron microscope, a microscope picture of skeletal muscle. So the question is, is this side normal or is this side normal? Now you can see we've got lines, lines, lines. Lines, 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 nucleus, normal, lines, normal, nucleus, normal, lines, normal. This stuff is not normal. I mean, I'm sorry, this stuff could be normal or it may not be normal, or this may be normal. So this side here without might be normal, or this stuff, this side here with this stuff here might be normal. So you need to pick out, you know, which side is normal. So the question is, since you have some people here with, 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 with backgrounds and health, etc., is this side normal? Say yes if you think it is. Is this side normal? Say yes if you think it is. Nobody ever says yes, and I don't care, even PhDs. The right side is normal. Right is normal. These are mitochondria. Mitochondria. This patient, this is a free paper, by the way, you can show your customer, your, your, your clients, students, and patients. These are mitochondria. This is a diabetic patient. This is a lean, what L? Lean, T, lean patient. Mitochondria lean, we, we mutate from normal to diabetic. We flame up silently and quietly. So how can a patient or a student, a golf pro, who's moving towards diabetes really move effectively? It's very, very difficult to do that once we are inflamed. But this actually is a picture of normal versus inflamed. We physically mutate. The, I'm not the person I was 10, 15 years ago, and I'm trying not to inflammate, obviously. So as we increase body mass, as we get heavy, more prone to tension headache, migraine headache, widespread pain, abdominal pain, back pain, whoops, sounds too fast. As we, as we go through metabolic syndrome, which is a pre-diabetic state, high blood sugar, high blood sugar all the time, look at all the pains that are overexpressed in those people versus normal, local widespread pain, neck pain, shoulder pain, tendon pains, disc herniation, radiating pain, osteoarthritis. How helpful is this for a golfer, right? How do you, how do you train someone to move if, they, if, if they've got diet-induced joint muscle inflammation? This is a, these are type 2 diabetic patients. They have reduced mobility. Type 2 diabetic patients reduced mobility across all joints tested compared to age and weight match controls. Diabetic patients, type 2, where they eat themselves into with lumbar stenosis, pain shooting down the leg, and risk of disc herniation goes up in neck and low back. So we eat ourselves into this mutated state. So this is my upcoming website. You can see I've got to have a book coming out. We have supplements, a deflame club. But the key here is looking at these inflammatory foods. We eat these over time. We achieve a, a disease depending upon our genetic disposition. Not at all a cool thing, not at all, whoops. So I call this basically, when we go from this and eating these foods here, why we do is because we are dietary crackheads. We love sugar, flour, and oil, donuts, and pastries, and all the rest of the stuff, breads and pasta, on and on and on. We love the taste. The taste is a, is a reward or a pleasure experience. It is the exact same pathway involved with regular addiction. So we are wired to gain weight for various reasons. So it kind of, sounds kind of weird, but if you want to learn more about this, just Google David Seaman, dietary crackhead. And you'll come to this paper. So this is my brother, a bit of a dietary crackhead. He didn't like being a dietary crackhead. He goes, I'll send you a better picture. Here's this one. How's that one? Oh, that one's good. So he was eating these foods. This is the average American. 20% of calories from refined grains. 20% refined sugars. 20% refined seed oils, corn, safflower, sunflower, trans fats. So this is what he was eating. And that got him, I said, he should have been eating this, and this is what he actually did eat. 
after I told him, you got to change your diet around. So you got to get you know, healthy animal products, vegetables, fruits, sweet potatoes, other tubers, raw nuts, and spice, dark chocolate. Take the edge off a little bit if you'd like. And so this is what he did. He went from here, and when he was like this, if he was a if he was a, a golf student for any of the pros or a patient, he had uh, he, he had adult onset asthma, taken two meds, steroid and a bronchodilator. He had aches and pains from basically top to bottom, hurt constantly. Uh, his elbows hurt so much he couldn't do two push-ups, bilateral pain. So I said, well, you know, you can just go anti-inflammatory and eat properly. So this is what he did in, in three months. This happened to him. No pain, no asthma meds. So now this guy can move the way he would like him to move if you were the golf pro teaching him. So this is both of us. We, we think that we have pain, just so fat guys get pain, but it's physically mutated people who get pain. So a physiological mutation takes place. And this is what it involves right here, but I'm not gonna do this now. Not enough time. So this is a real quick look at this. This is also a free paper that you'll be able to see again later. As we flame up with the inflammatory diet, our brains inflame, our adipose tissue inflames, our liver inflames, our muscles inflame, our blood vessels inflame, and our pancreas inflames, all from living on sugar, flour, and refined oils as the primary calorie sources. So this is a great little review article on atherosclerosis. You've all seen this before. So you've all seen this before, some version of this, correct? I'm sure you have, right? The vessels clog up. And it's not a surprise, and this is a great free paper also, uh, they tell us that these are the foods that get us there. If you want to get like this, if you want to get you know, atherosclerosis, if, if you want to have a stroke, heart attack, peripheral heart disease, if you want to be impotent by the time you're 40, this is the plan. Because that's, that's how it goes. So this guy needs to vasodilate for blood vessels to work properly. So you're, you're obviously we're occluding in the vessel wall. It is because of sugar flour. Omega-6 fatty acids, trans fats, not enough omega-3 fats, not enough nutrients, too much salt, smoking, and not enough activity. Now, no one would say here that swinging a golf club is going to give me atherosclerosis, right? Of course not. Eating causes atherosclerosis, not playing golf, not exercising. So, we'll do this. Atherosclerosis causing back pain because of the relationship to atherosclerosis to the abdominal aorta and lumbar feeder arteries. This is osteoarthritic cartilage. And you can see here, uh, you would think, well, this is, you know, I swing a golf club and I damage my joint because, because musculoskeletal tissues don't get damaged by eating, they get damaged by wear and tear, is what we think. We'll look at this real quick. This is the blood vessel once again. These are the chemicals. See, these chemicals are too involved, not an issue, watch. Come on, here we go. So this is the same osteoarthritic image before. Here is your blood vessel atherosclerosis process. Look at the common chemistry, PGE2 in both. Metalloproteinase is for digesting collagen in both, and then TNF in both. Now you guys know TNF? There's a famous lefty golfer who, who does advertising for a TNF inhibitor. Okay, so TNF is involved with the generation of atherosclerosis and, and osteoarthritis. So we eat ourselves into a painful state. Lipid deposition in joints is observed early stages of OA, before histological or symptomatic changes occur. So we eat ourselves into an inflamed state. Vascular pathology, osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis, inflammatory disease, diabetes-induced osteoarthritis. So here's how we eat ourselves into a painful musculoskeletal system. And it happens slowly because your first drive-by self-shooting tasted good. Right? Your second one tasted good. But the problem is, over time, we inflame into a mutated state that's not able to handle the rigors of physical movement. And I think my, my time is up. So thank you very much for your attention.